exhaust gas temperature is it important if so why is it important and should you monitor it and if so how do you do it actually in my opinion exhaust gas temperature is one of the more important things to know when it comes to safety while there is obviously lambda and there is a lot of things how you can monitor your exhaust as well especially if you want to make power for example with exhaust manifold pressure but exhaust gas temperature is important especially if you are going to run longer pulls uh, going to run high power and you want to make sure that your engine is running a long and healthy life the ideal way to do it would be uh, running individual probes for every cylinder the reason behind that is you want to make sure that every cylinder is running at the same mixture well you could say well can't I just run that amount of AFR or Lambda sensors? Uh, well, first of all, that would be quite expensive. It would be possible in theory. Four sensors are already expensive. And if you go for an uh, engine with more cylinders, that's going to be even more. So that's not really an option. And the issue with the AFR or Lambda sensors is also that they don't like those high temperatures from turbo engines. So that's kind of out of the question. The reason why you want to run a exhaust gas, gas temperature though is that by monitoring the temperature that your individual runners have, you can actually see if one runner is running hotter, for example, that it's actually running leaner. And therefore, in most ECUs, you can combat that by running one injector at a little bit higher duty cycle and therefore balance out that temperature and make sure that your engine is running healthy and for example not a singular valve or one piston where it's running leaner and therefore hotter is burning a hole in it so that's the first thing that you can prevent you can prevent engine damage internally the second thing is preventing failure to your turbo while on short poles or on the street you are not probably not going to reach those high temperatures but in for example garrett applications or on garrett turbos they usually are spec to about 950 to 980 degrees celsius of exhaust gas temperature so that's measured at the collector to the turbo and that's something you can monitor as well to prevent damage to your turbo if you run kind of a lot of boost and uh, you fear that your turbo might be getting a little hot then it makes a lot of sense to have a look at that and see if it actually gets to a range where it's kind of dangerous if it does well just add some fuel to keep everything a little cooler the other side of the coin is you may be able to run the mixture a little leaner until that point so for example up to like 12 or 12.2 AFR to uh, get everything a little more aggressive and crisp but richen the mixture up when the temperatures get to a point where you don't feel that comfortable anymore so like at above 850 or so then just make it a bit richer to protect the turbo and everything else in the engine so you have the maximum power when you can but not damage anything uh, when there's danger or when there's actually something that might be an issue. So that's basically the benefit of exhaust gas temperature monitoring. High exhaust gas temperature can not only cause turbo failure, but can also cause in kind of a way piston or valve failure because a high exhaust gas temperature uh, is actually an indicator for high combustion chamber temperature so if the egt is are high that also means that your combustion temperature is even higher and therefore that may be an indicator that your pistons or your valves are about to melt so that's also a good thing to look out for even if you are not really worried about your turbo but uh, and for example running an NA application for example nitromethane engines I think they burn really really hot and in that application that's really crucial although I don't think many people here will run that fuel that is a scenario where that makes sense even in an NA application and this is also something the hotter the exhaust valves actually are the higher the risk of knock there is so 
maybe cooling down your exhaust gas temperature might be able to make a little bit more horsepower although on the other side a little hotter exhaust gas temperature might actually make your turbo spool a little faster so there's two things you have to look out for or multiple things you have to keep in mind when tuning for egts how do you monitor egts well there is multiple methods on stock ecus they often have an a calculated EGT which doesn't really do anything except for calculate the EGTs depending on more values like uh, AFR or the uh, boost pressure TPS etc but on a lot of other cars like diesels and high performance engines you actually have exhaust gas temperature sensors and on softwares like on stock ECUs, those are actually taken in mind quite often. And when these are getting hot, for example, on uh, the 225 horsepower 1ITs, they are actually richening up the mixture by quite a lot to keep the EGTs down and to not melt anything in downstream in the exhaust or in the engine generally. On a budget ECU like a Speedoino, Often there is not a real input for exhaust gas temperature or EGT, but the possibility to use an external device to show you EGTs is there. And I'm going to do that in my video series of how to tune your ECU. And I'm going to look at what influences exhaust gas temperature. So stay tuned for that. But you can at least monitor your exhaust gas temperature and um, that is something that you may do or should do if you for example plan on tracking your car because on many of those controllers or amplifiers that you have to use with the k-type thermocouples you can set an alarm that goes off at a specific temperature so you know when to back off the throttle that's another thing the type of probe you have to use is a k-type thermocouple that is the most commonly used which has a temperature range of up to about 1400 degrees celsius and even down to minus 200 degrees celsius so it's a huge range and it can basically measure almost everything that you would need in the automotive sector you can also use them for coolant temperature and other temperatures but that's not the point here in this case we just want to use uh, want to look at egts for those because they only give out a very small voltage you need an amplifier so for example those displays they are usually usually with an integrated amplifier or if you want to use them in an ecu for example that is or offers an egt input you need to buy an amplifier box usually so that you can plumb in those sensors in those boxes it's pretty cool because you can in most cases plumb in more than just one EGT sensor so you can monitor every cylinder in your engine. That's what I said in the beginning which is very very important or is very important if you want to get the maximum out of your engine. Where do you place it? Well depending on your setup if you measure each cylinder it would be in the runner as close to the head as possible and if it's in the scenario where you're only using one on a turbo car it's going to be closest to the turbocharger within the collector or turbine housing. Depends on what you are using or what you feel most comfortable welding to because welding to cast iron can be quite difficult so might be best to use the manifold if you have a tubular manifold. On ECUs like the ECU Master Black or Max ECU or whatever else you often have the EGT input and you can set a lot of parameters to what happens when the EGTs reach a certain level. So you can make the mixture richer, actually decrease the boost duty cycle or do other things that you wish to specify for example you can also lower the ignition advance which will though actually raise your uh, exhaust gas temperature but most important probably would be lowering the boost level and making the mixture richer that will come in most handy for cooling down the combustion process. If you have any other questions about exhaust gas temperature and EGT probes and other things, let me know down in the comments below. I wish you a nice day and goodbye.